Craving the perfect holiday snack? Check out Farmer Bill's Biltonk. Think beef jerky, but better. No sugar, no preservatives, just pure animal protein goodness. Crafted from premium grass-fed beef or bison and air-dried to perfection, Farmer Bill's Biltong is nutrient-packed, energy-dense, and perfect for an on-the-go treat or a standout snack for your next party. My favorite is the original bison, but the other flavors like the original beef, smokehouse, and spicy chili have me second-guessing that choice more than once. Visit FarmerBillsProvisions.com to grab a one-pound slab or a variety pack and use code BIZBIT10 for 10% off. Farmer Bills Biltong, don't be the two-liter guy at this year's Christmas party. Say you had a little teeny 400-watt plug-in wall heater and you put it on in your corner of your basement and ran it all winter. Or if you took a S9 and set it to 400 watts, it's still it's using the same amount of watts. Welcome to the Business Bitcoinization Show, the show dedicated to helping you enrich your life and grow your business with Bitcoin, the hardest money on planet Earth. I'm your host, Josh Friedemann, and our guest today is John Hefner, who's the owner of Hashing to Heating, where he designs and helps to implement systems to capture the heat energy from Bitcoin miners and apply it to just about anything that needs heating. He's an engineer at heart and has 20 years of experience in the home performance, home energy, and custom home building sector. I think you're going to enjoy today's interview. We do have a bit of the interview where John is showing some of his personal heating setup using a Bitcoin miner. So if you're interested in that, you can probably find the link to that video in the show notes below. Of course, before we get to our interview with John, we do have this week's Bitcoin meetup spotlight. And this week, it's Sioux Falls Bitcoin. Sioux Falls Bitcoin runs a meetup out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. They prioritize connecting local Bitcoiners, providing education and encouraging the use of Bitcoin as a currency in their area. The Sioux Falls area is known for its entrepreneurial streak as well as a focus on independence and self-sufficiency, making it an ideal location for Bitcoin adoption. Their monthly meetup is on the second Monday of every month, but they host other events from time to time as well. Locations vary, and you can find more about Sioux Falls Bitcoin on Twitter at Sioux Falls BTC or at SiouxFallsBitcoin.com. Now, we're going to get to our interview with John right after this. Business owners, unlock the benefits Bitcoin has to offer your business with the Bitcoin for Business Quick Start Guide. This 27-page guide highlights the six ways you can grow your business with Bitcoin. Check it out in the show notes. John, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Josh. Thanks. Thanks again for having me. So I like to start off every single interview with a few questions that help us to get to know you a little bit better and give us some insight for our own lives. Are you ready for these? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. When and how did you first learn about Bitcoin? As, uh, as it is for many of us, it's probably a little bit of a painful question, right? right? Because uh, I, I thought of this when I was reading your questions. I think, I think Bitcoin knocks on our door. Um, it knocks a few times before we decide to let it in, at least in my mind. It was like, you know, here's this Bitcoin thing, you know, and everyone says three touches or they say whatever they might say. But yeah, um, early on, I heard about Bitcoin because I'm of my age group. I was around and you know, I was always a hard money advocate person. I was always interested in coinage and collecting money. And then the issue of, you know, well, this was a silver certificate and now it's not. And like, well, what happened? And I was born before 71. So I kind of lived this whole thing. And, you know, so my whole life I've been looking for something like that. And um, I was in a thing called um, the Hours Trader where we would, it was a 2008 ish, you know, it's like Occupy times and everyone was saying, well, let's find a system outside the current U S dollar system where we wouldn't, you know, we could, it was, so it's electronic ledger, ironically, electronic ledger where we banked our hours and we would work proof of work doing something for someone else, like painting an old lady's fence or something. And then you would get like four hours in your bank. And you could trade those hours for something else, like a massage or someone coming, cleaning up your yard or whatever, but no one would ever trade any dollars. And so it was a thing outside of the system. So I was like, oh, that's great. So we were in this group for a while and went on for a couple of years. And then someone in there was like, hey, we should try this, look at this Bitcoin thing. And it was like, 
Mm, you know, it's like a couple of years later, I was like, what, what about that thing? And then someone sent me that article. It's like 2012. And, you know, of course, the rest is history because I didn't pay any attention until 2017. And mm. um, as a then that was the story was environmental, environmental. Of course, the FUD started about energy. And I was like, wait a minute. I'm an environmental science major. I work on homes. I work HVAC. Let me just get one of these things. And that was my first S9 and, you know, just kind of plugged it in and was like, oh my God, this thing is a jet engine and a furnace. What the <laughs> heck is going on? Yep. And I was like, you couldn't, you didn't have brains hardly then or, the, you know, so there was no way to, it was on 100% flat out or off. And, you know, everyone was building sound boxes, building all these things. And so I was just more like, keep my interest on this thing is really hot. People are looking at it the wrong way. And then I got into Bitcoin. Question number two is this. What's an insight or fact about Bitcoin that you wish everyone understood? Divisibility. You can buy a dollar's worth of Bitcoin. You can DCA and everything's groovy. Just kind of just keep keep changing a little bit of your money at the time and uh, start small. Question number three. What's the Bitcoin resource you most recommend to other people? I don't want to uh, be too self-promoting, but just go ahead and go to hashing to heating with the two hashing to heating dot com and then go to the it's a searchable page. So you could put in like GG or, you know, to Troy Cross or whoever you want to put and you're going to find info. And then there's a whole section basically of resources where you can dive deep. And that has every, you know, big major resource there, I think. And like, I guess Swan's a pretty good one, but, you know, go to GG, go to any of those OGs and just like you know, uh, and the FUD is a really good one. There's, um, but they're all linked on my pages and that way you can kind of like, you know, go through them. But each one of those usually has, you know, just every single thing kerneled inside them as well. So if you've gone to like end the FUD or, you know, mm -hmm. some of those ones, Nat Natalie and D D plus plus, or, you know, any of the stuff, Troy Cross is a white paper that's kind of based, my whole company is based on that kind of premise of, you know, mining uh, in a quote, quote unquote, green fashion or mining that where the energy is conserved. But anyway, go to my page, I guess, and go to the resources and dig in. Now, question number four, we're getting us out of Bitcoin a little bit. Beyond Bitcoin, what is a resource tool or idea that's been helpful to you or your business recently? Contacting people that are professionals and what they do and letting them give me the criticism that sometimes, you know, when you're doing things on your own in a bubble, sometimes you don't get uh, someone just saying, well, you know, you have too much content or, well, this is confusing or this is too, you know, we need to like a web page guy who's going to basically streamline things and make it like more user friendly, more, inter you know, better better way to deliver the message, but allowing other, I guess, people to criticize you is, is good in business. It's hard, but good. Now we have our final arbitrary, but insightful question. And it's this as a general life principle, is it better to ask why or why not? I thought about that question and it's a good question, but I think, uh, I'll take the, either the Zen Zen way out or the cheating way out and say they're both the same question, um, because one eventually leads to another. And I guess it's more like, um, I always said, why can't? So that's a contraction, you know, why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? And so it's the same as why not, I guess, but, um, they're the same question. I appreciate that. I don't think I've ever quite gotten that framing before. And uh, a lot of the benefit of asking this question is just hearing how people are thinking through how they approach problems. So it's always interesting to hear a new take on it. Meet Linkster, your premier Bitcoin focused advisor. Linkster caters to businesses, institutions, family offices, and high net worth individuals. They merge your unique financial goals and needs with Linkster's Bitcoin expertise to craft your own sustainable plan to preserve and grow the value of your hard earned profits and retained earnings. At Linkster, it's not just advice, it's tailored execution. Connect directly with the founder by visiting linkster.com. That's L Y N C S T E R. Dot com Linkster. Secure your future with Bitcoin. Today's episode of Business Bitcoinization is proudly brought to you by Vellus Commerce, where the future of business technology meets Bitcoin. As we journey through the era of Bitcoin and its transformational impact on businesses, there's one name that stands out. 
Vellus Commerce. Whether you're looking to build a cutting edge website, a seamless mobile app, or custom software, Vellus is your go to team. They've been diving deep into the world of Bitcoin since 2014, making them one of the most experienced groups for integrating Bitcoin and Lightning payments into a variety of digital platforms. But here's what truly sets them apart. Vellus Commerce doesn't just build. They bring a wealth of knowledge to ensure your project success from day one. Their team understands the nuances of Bitcoin, ensuring that your business stays ahead of the curve. And for all business Bitcoinization listeners out there, Vellus Commerce is offering a free consultation to kickstart your project the right way. So if you're ready to future-proof your business in the coming age of hyper-Bitcoinization, head over to VellusCommerce.com or reach out on Twitter at Vellus Commerce. Let's make sure your business thrives in the Bitcoin era. Now, we're here today to talk about hashing to heating. You've already teased it a little bit, but I'd love for you to just share with the audience a brief overview of what the business is and what your vision is for the company. Um, What is hashing to heating? Simplest way is it's just a way of looking at, um, at this process and coming from the home performance side, coming from uh, general contracting and building and energy. We had a saying that there was no silver bullet, but there's a 10,000 silver BBs. So like, you know, you, you, you can't just say, well, what's the right size for this? Or what's the thing I need for this? Well, how is your home built? What is, you know, how, how are, what are all the components? What is everything that's going into it? What is your goals? What's your demands? You know, there's multiple things to, to, to factor in. So I guess my, um, the easiest answer is the vision is be a catalyst, be a hub, try to integrate the miners as boilers or looking at them as a central boiler or a central heat core system without heat core asterisks, not heat core the company, but the heat core system. Um, and then integrating that into all kinds of other systems that we already have rather than trying to build like a Bitcoin furnace or a Bitcoin X, because to me, it's, it's more like, um, two separate things that we have to integrate. So that's, that's the, that's the goal. And then to, um, provide, uh, equipment and solutions to anybody who wants to be involved or just consulting if they're already, you know, a miner and they just want to get into different directions. I think a lot of people might be curious about the idea of using a Bitcoin miner to heat a room. They like the idea. It probably seems like more of a headache because it doesn't come packaged at a big box store. I'd be interested to get your insight today about how people should be looking at this. You know, is using a miner for heat in your home, is it possible to run that in a way that is financially beneficial to you? And how effective will it be compared to a furnace that was built to be a furnace? The super simplified way to look at heating with ASICs, and this is, um, you know, kind of laws of thermodynamics and that type of thing. An ASIC is the same efficiency as a one of those um, like a wall radiator that's electric so if a long white wall radiator that just has like the stinky metal coil inside or if you go if you're in southern california you know a lot of temperate places have um, just simply like a wall fan where you turn it on and a fan is blowing behind a coil so if you're seeing a glowing coil and a fan or if you have a long radiator that's just electric and you click it on with an electric dial on your radi- you know, thermostat, then those and anything like that or an electric water heater that is called a resistance water heater, essentially. So the, the term, the technical term is resistance heating, where an electric current comes to the end of its journey, let's say, if that's not really true, but like the electricity comes to a point where it is now hitting a negative and positive metal distributor. These might not be the exact terms, so don't, you know, uh, attack me too bad on the uh, electrical engineers out there. But this is what's happening. Electricity is coming to a point. It's making the coil glow hot from the electricity, the resistance to the transfer of that. And that's being dissipated into the space. So the BTUs are coming from kilowatts to BTUs into BTUs that warm your space. And then from that point on, like we said, it depends on, well, how well insulated is your house? What is, you know, the envelope? That's my, you know, previous background is 
building envelopes. All that aside, you've got that efficiency. Now you can take electricity and put it to a heat pump, essentially an air conditioner slash heat pump, whatever term you want to use, where it's using the electricity at a much more efficient way, a system, right, that is designed to take less watts and create the same amount of BTUs inside. But that system has its own lots, you know, costs, mechanics, refrigerant fluids, all these other kind of things associated with it. But yes, it is a more efficient use of energy. And there are more, um, like there's a more efficient use of gas and on-demand hot water heater, say, might be a more efficient use of the gas in some way. But if you don't have gas service at your house, for example, there's many places that just only have electric. Or you don't have the ability to put in a heat pump and you only have radiators. All those types of situations are going to be exactly equal to the cost of running an ASIC at the same wattage as you are using like a... Um, in a minute, we'll jump over to the to the physical examples. But say you had a little teeny 400 watt plug in wall heater and you put it on in your corner of your basement and ran it all winter. Or if you took a S9 and and set it to 400 watts, it's still it's using the same amount of watts. Right. So there's no difference in your actual cost. Then it just depends on how much are, is does your utility charge you for electricity. And then you can then to answer kind of the other questions, is it profitable? Um, for the most part, in North America, in most regions, it's not necessarily profitable. It's definitely not profitable to run like, say, an S9. It might be profitable to run a next generation S19. But to answer the other question was, is it, you know, there are ones that are out of the box now. Um, and I think they're, you know, there's one called 21 Energy out of Europe that's super interesting because they're doing S19s. Um, there's a couple other ones I don't really super want to name at the, at the point, but they're available at kind of in North America. And, you know, we can get them through links on my page, but I'm not going to say that, you know, they've got some uh, some challenges because they, they have proprietary type things and you have to pay certain fees to be in their various pools and you know i don't won't go into the details of them but there are there are out of the box options available and then there's kind of like the one i'm playing with where you could do a diy i'm i was looking at that from a different point like we were like there are manufacturers that are wanting to do standalone space heater things that look good and sit in the in a house in a corner and then but my system my little basic asic system is sort of like um like a hamburger and a bun, and then you add all your other things to it. So it's like um, you want to have a, you want to put it in your crawl space or you want to put it in your attic or you want to put it in a closet with just this little filter inlet to it or you want to put it in an old-fashioned stereo cabinet or a, you know, a file cabinet. Whatever you want to put this system into, you can do that as long as you have a, enough incoming air and a place for the air to go out so that's kind of like you can do a little uv air you know biological sterilizer you can add 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 all these things to it or you can buy the basic thing and build it yourself into your own closet and that's an alternative system for like you know lower cost entry level no frills kind of thing and then someone can design what they want to make it into so there's uh, a lot of ways to hash a sat, I guess, instead of not kill a cat. But um, there's a lot of ways to go about it. And that's what I'm trying to do is get a little bit of products for everybody. So real quick question here. It sounds like if you're using gas, that's going to be a little bit more efficient. So this whole issue of heating your home with ASIC miners may not be relevant. Did I understand you correctly in saying that? Typically in, in a lot of, well... The problem with every answer I give is like there's always an exception to every answer and there's always um, I think it's a rule of thumb, though, there's a, there as a rule of thumb. But then you can't rule out like what happened with gas prices in the last couple of years, mm -hmm. which is crazy. But if you are running electric heat, then there's no reason not to other than the fact that it might be, you know, you might have to change some things about, about your setup. But let's just say your heating system ran out. Uh, it just died on you and you have a little bit of time. You don't have to, you know, get it here tomorrow. 
then setting up a system that is heated by ASIC miners is going to give you cheaper heat, right? Generally speaking, I can't think of an exception because you're paying for the electricity anyway and you're getting some Bitcoin in return. Yes, I mean, that answer is is pretty much true, always universally true. Um, And you are, like if you're building a new home, say, remodeling something, major remodel, if you're you know, at that stage anyway, then you're at the best point because then you can take some time to look at, look at these types of systems and evaluate if it's right for you, or if you can tie it into something that's, you know, going to be a traditional system kind of behind it. Like to me, the perfect, an easy example, right? If you're interested in, um, if you have a pool, right? If you have to heat the pool, everybody, you've heard of a lot of people kind of jump on this because it's a great, you know, a great example. Um, of what you could do with a lot of heat from an ASIC all the time. So if you want to have a, you know, heat your outdoor pool with it and you have an electric, and maybe you have a gas water heater or an electric water heater, you could still have um, a traditional water heater tank built by a plumber, right? And now you're going to have an ASIC immersion system or hopefully in the very near future, you're going to have a water cooled system that doesn't require oil. We'll put a little asterisk next to that for, for a minute. Um, but right now, let's say you wanted to heat hot water for the house. You have a bunch of kids, you have a bunch of showers, a bunch of rooms, this kind of thing, and you have a pool and you take do a bunch of laundry, so you're using a lot of hot water, those types of things. Maybe you don't even want to get into heating your house or, or you have... Um, you know, a nice gas furnace and a nice outdoor air conditioner type thing, brand new. What we could do with the with the ASIC heating system would be to have the pool water plumbed to a titanium heat exchanger to heat the pool water. A standalone indirect water heater tank, which is a you know a standard product that's out there that's made for you know wood boilers or gas boilers or anyone else that has a hot loop they would have an indirect hot water heater. So now you have two vessels that can exchange heat with water, one being the pool, one being your hot, a hot water tank, or maybe two, depend, you know, whatever your size of family, but a big water tank that's going to take as much heat off the ASICs as it possibly can in the, on the, in the loop. So now you're, you're, you're taking energy, you're putting it into the ASICs. The ASICs are giving off heat while they're do, performing their mining hashing computations guesses essentially um so the hash is happening the heat is being given off into a liquid either oil or water that heat is now being transferred into another liquid your pool water and your domestic hot water it's going to circulate through a indirect hot water tank where nothing is happening so it's just a solid state uh kind of operation there it's just putting the hot into the water that's coming in from the city. So your raw water comes in cold, goes into these to a hot water tank, it absorbs the heat from the miner, and then when you go to take a shower or use the hot water, it travels from that point into your existing on-demand hot water or your existing hot water tank. If it needs to be bumped up a couple degrees, your water tank takes care of that, but it uses very low amount of energy to do that. If it doesn't need to be bumped up at all, it flows through there and goes on to your shower. And then the cold water comes back in and starts the process all over again. So you're reducing your overall utility bill on everything. You're heating the pool the same kind of way, right? Maybe it doesn't get the pool all the way to 88 degrees constantly all year, whatever you set it at, but it's going to take most of it, right? So this is kind of the the push me pull me is what is your budget? What is the capacity of electricity at your house? Right? Because it's one thing to say, I want to do everything with ASICs. But if you lived in Minnesota and you couldn't make that many BTUs with your electricity service, then you're back to trying, you know, that's where the, that's where the little bit of hurdles come in. Like, so start simple and say, what, what is my power panel have in capacity? before I had to get into costing anything to upgrade. What can I do 
you know, before it's a major expense to me. And if it is a major expense, you know, is it in a major remodel or is it part of the plan anyway? Most, a lot of people do upgrade their electric panels or they do something when they're going to get solar or they're going to do a remodel. They want, you know, more electric features in their house. They're going to do those steps anyway. So just what stage you are and, and, you know, case by case basis. So basically if you're building, that's the best time to start figuring out how this a system like this, this generated by ASIC miners, uh, when you're building a home, that's the best time to be looking at it. If you have an idea that you're going to be upgrading or changing things in your home in the future or even in your business, then you can start doing some research now. Before we take a look at your setup or you walk us through for those who are just listening on audio, I do want to ask you, I think you said earlier that you could potentially use this to create air conditioning. I may have misunderstood you, but that caught my attention. I haven't heard that talked about before. I'm in Mississippi, so I don't need heat nearly as much as I need AC. So could you speak to that? Correct me if I'm wrong, and if not, share a little bit more about what that looks like. It's a fun topic. To start from the beginning, yes, there is a real-world principle and a f- system that can do this, right? But what what the, what we have to keep in mind is that there's no free lunch, and there's never like anything that's not. Um, yes, where it's all, humans are always innovating, of course, right? But a lot of the stuff of like that's like held by physical principles of the earth, we can't change. Hot moves to cold, wet moves to dry, high pressure moves to low pressure. Those are three building science principles that always like stick in my head from from forever, right? So hot moves to cold, you can't, you can't create cold, you can only remove heat, right? So when every time we say air conditioning, that's, if you're in Mississippi, Mississippi right? You said? Yeah. Like, so when you have the air conditioner on, the air conditioner, as well, it's probably also dehumidifying because you have humidity, so that's a major factor of feeling warm. But so it's dehumidifying as well as grabbing the BTUs of heat from inside the envelope of the house and throwing them to outside. That's why the outside fan is hot, and that's what you know, essentially that's an outdoor. It's not the same as a dry cooler because it's because it's doing expansion and contraction of the change phase change of the liquid right from gas to liquid and i always get those things backwards but at one point it's gas and one point it's liquid and a compressor uses the energy in an efficient manner to to compress that gas in back into a liquid and that's how it it basically grabs the, the heat from inside your house and throws it outside in a simple explanation okay it's using electricity to run a compressor to compress the gas back into a liquid form during this heating or cooling process, which can be reversed in the winter to a heating process. Okay. So you're moving same with an igloo cooler. You, you put ice in there and it stays cold because you have the insulation R resistance, resistance to heat transfer. You insulate the thing and it stays cold inside, but the ice melts. So the heat is going into the ice, right? So the heat's never gone. It's just being removed. So that being said, the idea I, 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 go too far down these explanation holes but so you're substituting the compressor for the for a small little uh propane flame essentially right so even though it makes doesn't make sense the the way that functions is it's turning it back to a liquid and then it's like allowing it to go back through um whatever this other regulator thing is it's taking that energy and converting the liquid back to gas and then doing whatever it does, the propane refrigerator gets rid of that compressor and uses the heat to change the liquid back to gas or whoever it is. So it's essentially performing the same function and it's using energy in the form of the BTUs. So if you essentially, you know, burned that propane in an electric generating plant and turned it back to electricity and sent it back to a regular refrigerator or heat pump, it would do the same thing right so you're using like the same unit of energy to make the same cool so you're yes you're using heat to make cooling right so to answer the question it is possible so then you go the next step you go okay uh let me just look look around for these things and um i believe it's carrier or train i can't remember the there's a couple big manufacturers there's multi-million dollar equipment out there for big industry that will take exhaust gases 
Uh, say you have a big steam plant, say you have a, whatever it might be, you have a facility or you have a production system. Maybe it's running a bunch of gas exhaust from, I don't know, wood chippers or whatever it might be. As long as it's 71 degrees C, which is very hot, that's like 140 something Fahrenheit or more. Um, I don't have it right in front of me, but super hot, right? 71 degrees C, which is very hard. Uh, so it's, it's answering the question. It exists in the world. You can make cold from heat. The systems are very expensive and cumbersome and, you know, usually designed for big, big industry. The minimum constant temperature of the either liquid or gas that goes through this machine has to be 71 degrees C. Now, that's where in the past, up until up until recently, uh, with an asterisk, I was always saying, well, this is almost this is physically impossible because for example, the um, the newest Watts Minor M53 S plus, whatever it is, that's a liquid cooled, water cooled ASIC. The highest output temperature it's capable of is like 65 degrees C. So because it has an inlet maximum and it raises the temperature by 10 degrees. So the inlet maximum is 55 C, meaning the outlet maximum is 65 or, or maybe it was even 61. But you were still missing like seven or eight degrees C constant output, right? So and then so if you want that type of temperature, it's going to start degrading the chips. So you essentially couldn't make an ASIC that was going to run hotter, and most everybody was push, pushing towards making ASICs that were running cooler. So to me, it was counterproductive to say that this was even a possibility. And then I was set straight, <laughs> and um, it's something that's not exactly even out there yet, but I'm being told by sources that I believe that there are ASIC manufacturers making higher temperature ASICs on purpose now. <laughs> so that might be next year. It might be whenever it might be happening. And that's the kind of the same thing as well. Pretty soon there's going to be a water cooled one that can be run in the United States on 220 power that won't need oil. Mm -hmm but it's not here yet either, right? I've learned that it's better to tell everybody about the future options and not have a sale in the moment than have them find out about something six months later and be like, what? Why did you sell me this thing, you know, that's like not the, you know, not the best when I could have got the best later, so. Well, I won't hold my breath for the ASICs that act as air conditioners or at least uh, aid in air conditioning. But that's really interesting. They're coming. And yeah, yeah. I'll, I will keep that in mind uh, if and when I build in the future. But I do want to take a few minutes to take a look, if we could, at your setup. You can talk people through it for those who are on audio. But if you're on video, you might be able to catch this as a clip. So could you uh, give us a, a, a mini tour of yeah, your setup? Yeah, here? yeah. I'm, and I just want to, you know, just as a preemptive discussion, right? This is bare bones. This is like, this is no frills. Like I said, this is like, uh, you know, the burger and the bun and no, no relish or anything. So this is just to give uh, kind of an example of just what we're talking about in general, right? And then, um, yeah, I'll just have right at it here. So this, none of this is required for this is just something that I have for a little demo thing that I can wheel around or whatever it is. So I built this and I wanted to design these, um, these, this basic ASIC, I'll use the, my little catchphrase. So basic ASIC, I wanted to, um, uh, or hash pack mini, I don't know what to call it, but basic ASIC, I wanted to make a thing that was just as bare bones as you could have that you could build, that a DIY person could build themselves off of everything they could order uh, online and then they could decide whatever they wanted to put in because so a lot of people said oh, I want a job site thing I want this that so I decided to make something that would fit inside like standard stuff you could buy at Home Depot a standard job tra trailer pack or whatever so this is just like a a, a rubber or whatever the heck it is it's, it's not rubber made but it's one of those other ones I've got it on this little tote thing there's this little square 
So um, inside that is what what counts. Um, hopefully it stays together here because I made it to stay together. So inside here, uh, for those who can see on the quick video, the basic ASIC is just a filter box, uh, an AC Infinity fan. This is all available from AC Infinity. I'm going to have little, like, that's a whole other little side story, but uh, th there are links. There will be links available someday on my page, and I'm going to have that all set up in products, but uh, a week or two. Um, so AC Infinity fan, AC Infinity filter box, AC Infinity uh, duct, ducting, flex ducting there, and then in the nice stainless steel clamps, they come with it and everything. Everything comes with AC Infinity stuff. I'm not an AC Infinity rep. It's kind of a long story there, but, uh, yeah, I... Love their products and wanted to make them, uh, you know, this easily available system. So we've got their fan that has a temperature probe. I can't, I think it's called Cloudline. Um, the Cloudline series has a temperature probe. This is not hashing at the moment, but it is, the fan is on, and this is about the sound that you would have from uh, running it at about 400 watts, which is for, set at 420 watts right now. Um, from my place, so the fan's really quiet. It ramps up and down a little bit, you know, but you can. That's up to the DIYer to, to work on that part. Um, I have a little thing in my hand as well, right here. This little handy heater from uh, whatever whoever made that one, but this is a 400 watt heater that plugs into the wall. So we were talking earlier about that. The efficiencies. This is this is at 400 watts. This is at 400 watts. Literally exactly the same, right? This this one has a temperature probe that controls the fan speed long story short this is where we're we're at the in between R&D stage and production stage on things whereas I'd rather not like you know there's a, what I have is a temperature probe in the back I'll show in a second controlling uh, reading the heat that's being put off from the miner I go into my laptop and I interpolate that and set it up to where it's keeping the miner at the temperature I want, which is, you know, about low, about 84 to, you know, 88 C is what I want my minor chips to read. Okay. If that's miners, everybody out there that's a miner knows all these things. Anybody that doesn't, um, you know, that's a little bit long, too, too, in depth, too in depth. But to keep the miner where it normally would operate with its normal stock fans on, let's say it that way, uh, we need to run this fan at, you know, whatever it might be. So... This fan is now taking the place of, of the minor fans, right? So if you look in here, there are no fans on this ASIC. Um, this is a little special piece that Rick at Crypto Cloaks has made me from the 3D printer. So long story short, we've basically taken off the fans. We've got just the ASIC inside a box that it fits in and a custom 3D printed shroud for the front that forces all the air through the ASIC and the power supply, which is also in there without a fan. So there's no more sound from the miner, which was always the problem. And it, and now it's cooled by this little AC Infinity fan. It happens to just be, happens to just be flexible in here. It doesn't have to be like this. Like I said, the only thing we need is these, these few gut parts. You can build it into anything that it fits into as long as we have enough air feed. Like I have a filter on top of that. Uh, so filtered air coming in, so you don't have to worry about cleaning the miner for a long, long time. And it's also filtering the air in your house. Uh, that's going to pass through. It's going to cool the miner off. It's going to push all the air through this box and force it through the miner. This is the thing that Crypto Cloaks will provide. All of these parts come with the stuff that you buy from AC Infinity, which is really beautiful because they give you these nice stainless steel parts. There's another 3D printed part on the bottom that holds the miner in the exact spot. And here's where I have the temperature probe, reading the temperature of the air coming off the miner. So that is not a perfect system, and it only works if you have to fiddle around with some apps and do some things to get it set up, but then once, you know, it's fine. This is, com this is a coming soon situation here. This is called a Nord board, or this is actually the, uh, yeah, the Nord board. Um, there's a Loki board and Nord board, and they're all um, from a guy named Zach, um, Zach Bomsta, who's got Pivotal Pleb Tech. We're working on getting this straightened out, and very soon this 
will control the fan instead of the temperature probe, right? And it does work on the S19s. It's kind of, that's the guy who's doing the stuff with the S9, S19 single board work and things. Um, long story short, it'll all come together very shortly. And there are people working on components like that out there to make it even simpler than it is now. But this is pretty simple um, if you know, you know a thing or two about just setting up your basic ASIC. Um, so that's that's it in a nutshell. That's an ASIC miner for no one who's ever you know seen those. That's one without a fan, the power supply for it, and it just runs inside this box quietly and puts its heat out into your house. Excellent. Well, for those of us who don't know a thing or two, <laughs> we could benefit from insight like yours. So I appreciate you sharing on the podcast today. Where do people go if they want to find out more, kind of keep up with what you're doing and check out some of those resources you've already shared with us today? Thank you, Josh, man. Thanks for having me and thanks for your patience with my uh, multi-directional answers here. I hope that everybody got some, some at least a little bit of value. Um, Please check me out at uh, either at hashing two heating the number two uh, on Twitter or um, just go to the webpage hashing two heating dot com. Uh, check out all the resources on there. Feel free to shoot me an email or anything if you want. I'll be glad to help you in any way I possibly can. And definitely I've got, you know, Give me a call, 30 minute free call or more like an hour or however long we talk and whatever, you you know, I'll talk your ear off like I just did here with Josh um, about your particular situation and see if it's right for you. And uh, that's, you know, I'm a transparent guy. I'd rather have it be right for everybody than have someone feel, you know, sad about Bitcoin. So excellent. Well, John, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate it. Well, friends, it's a wrap. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Business Bitcoinization Show. If you want to reach out to either me or John, you can find those links down in the show notes. And if you want to heat your home or business and make some money doing it, check out Hashing to Heating. As always, keep building, keep growing, and until next time, keep living and leading well. If you're a regular listener of the podcast, thank you. If you want to take a further step in your support for the show, you can help us grow by listening on Fountain, a value for value podcast app on iOS or Android. If you hear something you like that you disagree with or anything else, you can share it by sending some sats and adding a comment with your thoughts. Some of you have already done this and I appreciate it. I'm going to begin reading your boosts on upcoming episodes. So if you have some insight or value to add, let the people know. Getting started with Fountain is easy. You can add Bitcoin to your Fountain wallet by using your fiat accounts or any lightning wallet and one of my favorite features is that once you're using the app you can earn sats just by listening on fountain check out the link in the show notes to get started with fountain today